and foremost, we want to apologize for yesterday. The Zoom became very impossible yesterday. It was misbehaving. So uh, Doc Bishop Noel Jones waited for over an hour, 30 minutes seated, waited to be connected, but the Zoom wouldn't allow us to connect to live Facebook. We are sorry, the Bishop Noel Jones will be on next week, Friday. But today we are most anointed and blessed by God to have my mentor in the house, a father indeed, who has touched us in many ways and influenced our life in many ways. Today is loaded, today is blessed, and we are most honored to have on ground today, my own father, mentor, Dr. Abel Damina is in the house. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. We are trying to connect to Dr. Damina in the next few minutes, a few seconds. Hello, sir. We are blessed today. Something we break loose in your life. Hello, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. 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 I'm Babana, I'm happy to hear your voice. More grace to you, sir. So glad to see you, Reverend Josh. Bless you, man. Bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. How is mama and the kids doing? Blessed and blessed to be with you. How is uh, Jackie and everybody? They are all doing pretty well. They send their greeting. They are all watching you, eager to hear your voice. Well, I'm sir, glad to be here. Praise God. Sir, we are in a season that is so unique. Never has it been said a day will come when everybody will be confined to their living room for nothing less than six weeks to two months. Now we are going and it's becoming endless uh, because of one tiny disease called coronavirus. So I don't know what you have to say about the times in which we are in right now. What is the law saying to you and uh, what is happening, sir? Over to you. Well, well, I think we live in very exciting moments. For me, they're very exciting moments. And um, if you ask me what the Lord is saying, the Lord is saying what he has always been saying, you know, beginning from the, from the beginning of time. God does not create Hello, sir. God pro and is what he is what he has always said and is what you will always say. Mm. Yeah, so what has God been saying before now? His will is to have everybody to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. What is God saying now during coronavirus? His will is to yes, have sir. everybody to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. After coronavirus, what is God saying? To have everybody to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's right. So this is the hour. How are we going to take advantage of this season of confinement to carry out the speakings of God for the hour? Hello, sir. I think I think something instructive has happened and um, the body of Christ must be aware of this. And what has happened instructively is the apostolic mandate to the church has to be revisited again. And what I mean by apostolic mandate is discipleship. If you observe that the great commission is both evangelism and discipleship. In Matthew chapter 28, he said, go and make disciples teaching them to observe. Mm. Then he now said, mm. teaching. There's double emphasis it's in the Great Commission. In Mark chapter 16, mm. he said, go into all the world and preach. But in Matthew 28, he said, go and make disciples. So the mandate mm. of the church is to raise disciples. And one mm. of the most effective ways to raise disciples is not in the mega church. It's in the houses. Mm. The church is That's in right. the houses. And that is how the apostolic church was built in the book of Acts. If you see brother Paul in the book of Romans, he wrote to churches in the house of this, church in the house of this, because it is in those little, little gatherings that disciples are equipped, disciples are raised, and believers are properly empowered to go and do the work of ministry. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, the scripture tells us, he that descended, he see that ascended. And when he ascended up on high, he gave gifts to men, apostles, prophets, evangelists, 
pastoring teachers for the perfecting of the saints to do the work of ministry. So it is the saints that do the work of ministry. But the saints that do the work of ministry must be perfected. The perfection mm. is what we've been doing over the years. It is now time for what we have taught our people, for them to take it out to the grassroots where they are and begin to evangelize people one after the other, one after the other. So for me, this is an exciting time for the body of Christ. And it is time for believers who have been equipped within the pews to hit the streets and manifest the glory of God. Praise God. Wherever you are watching right now, I would like you to press the share button. One share you press will get 20 people on board and they'll begin to watch. I'm telling you, that's the greatest favor you can do to anyone because we're entering some serious moment right now. So um, this is our month for us, a church, the month of the unfinished work of Christ. I've heard you over the years preach on the finished work of Christ, the ongoing work of Christ. I would like to ask you, what is the finished work of Christ? And uh, what, by the time you give me the details, we can now move to the next one, which is the ongoing. I want you to elaborate and open us up to what does the finished work of Christ entails. Over to you, sir. All right, that statement on finished work of Christ is not in any verse of scripture. Just mm. like the statement finished work of Christ is not in any verse of scripture. They are cliches or expressions we give for explanation. So in order for oh, us to deal with the unfinished work of Christ or the ongoing work of Christ, we have to first of all begin with the finished work of Christ. Because if you do not begin with the finished work of Christ, anything you are teaching as the unfinished or ongoing work of Christ will result to dead works. Dead works is works that are done that are not built on the finished work of Christ. So the emphasis should be on the finished work of Christ because it is the finished work of Christ that enables the ongoing work of Christ and the unfinished work of the church, the unfinished work of the church. Christ has finished his own work, the ongoing work and the unfinished work of the church because whatever is unfinished, it's the responsibility of the church to finish. Christ has finished his own work, the book of Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 tells us, after he has offered himself as a sacrifice, he sat down. Sitting down doesn't mean he's tired. Sitting down means he has finished everything that has to do with the following. Number one, he has finished everything that has to do with salvation. The book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, for by grace are you saved. Saved. Take note of the tenses. Saved. S-A-V-E-D. Meaning it is finished. For by Master. grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is a gift Self. of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So where salvation is concerned, Christ has finished that work. In 2 Timothy Master. chapter nine, 1 verse 9, the Bible says, who has saved us. Tenses, S-A-V-E-D. Who has saved Save. us, is not saving us. He has already saved us and called called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. So he finished it, finished it and completed it. Then the next thing Jesus has finished is deliverance. In Colossians 1.13, he says, who had hmm. delivered, who had delivered us from the power of darkness. He's not going to deliver us. He has already delivered us mm. from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. The third one is forgiving, forgiveness. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Mm. He says, and be ye kind one to mm. another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath, hath, hath forgiven you. First John chapter 2, ah. verse 12. It says, mm. I write unto you little children, because your sins mm. are forgiven, forgiven for you name. for his name's sake. Forgiven in you. Colossians chapter 2, mm. verse 13, it says, And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your mm. flesh, hath he quickened together mm. with him, having forgiven mm. you all trespasses, yeah. forgiven mm. you. Then there's another forgiven one, you. sanctification. 
sanctification. Mm. Hebrews chapter mm. 2, verse 11. For both he that sanctifieth mm. and they who are sanctified mm. are all of one. Why? For which cause Why? he is mm. not ashamed to call them brethren. In 1 Corinthians chapter mm. 6, verse 11, it says, And such were some of you, but you are washed. Washed. You are washed. You are not going to be washed. You are, you are washed. washed. You washed. are sanctified. You are justified in the name of the Lord mm. Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Romans chapter 1, verse 1. Mm. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God by through faith. our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. Then Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Mm. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath, hath, mm. hath blessed us with all yes. spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Then the book of Hebrews mm. chapter 1 verse 14. For by one mm. offering he hath perfected forever, forever. them that are forever. sanctified. Forever. Mm. The book of 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 18 and 19. For as much as you know that you are not redeemed, redeemed with corruptible redeemed. things as silver See. and gold, from your oh. vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious mm. blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Ephesians mm. chapter 1, verse 13, in whom also you trusted. Mm. After mm. you heard the word that you believed, sealed with that Holy Spirit mm. of promise. So everything that Jesus should have done mm. for man, which is the promise of God in the scripture, mm. because Josh, the entire Bible is one message. The entire Bible is one context, one message, one context, one character. Mm. It is the message of the Christ. John 5, 39. Search the scriptures for in them, you think you have eternal life, but they are they which testify of me, meaning the scriptures are the message of the Christ, the revelation of Jesus. The Bible is not the message of anybody. It is the message of Christ. So the Bible is a Christocentric centric material that carries with it a Christocentric message. So because Christ is the center of the scriptures, the works we have, he has finished the works and he has sat down where salvation is concerned, mm. forgiveness is concerned, mm. deliverance is for concerned, eternal life is concerned, That's eternal right. salvation, eternal and redemption, inheritance. eternal and inheritance. inheritance. Everything mm. Jesus gave us is eternal. And a believer okay. must settle their first. A believer mm. must settle their first. Must it is called rest. We enter rest. rest. It's a place of rest. rest. When you have entered there and settled in the rest of God, then now God now begins to walk in you, both to will mm. Mm. and to do. Mm. And to do of his own plan. You cannot, you, cannot work out. you cannot work out what is not in. It is because it is in that you work it out. So work ah. out your salvation. Then he now told you in verse 13, for it is God, this good pleasure. So work of salvation is the work of God. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 10, after he says you are saved by grace through faith, he now says you are his workmanship, his handiwork. Yes, created. The network is monkey, just hang on, and uh, we keep flowing. Created in Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus unto good. Unto the Jesus. believer settled in a place of rest. Then from that position of rest, God begins to work in the believer. The work of mm. God in the believer is called spiritual growth. The work of God in the believer is called spiritual growth, which comes through the teaching of God's word. Now, spiritual growth does not make the believer who he is. Spiritual growth 
makes the believer realize who he is. You are already who mm. you are, whether you know it mm. or not, whether you have seen mm. it or not. Mm. Mm. You are already who you are, helps you to who you are, what you have, what you can do so that you can function in that reality. Mm. Mm. You can function in that reality. Mm. The network is misbehaving. We will keep being patient. There's rain falling everywhere. Let's be patient and keep enjoying it. Don't give up. Something is happening here. So let's keep flowing and keep pressing the share button. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. The network is freezing. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Hello, sir. Praise the Lord. We are working hard to rectify it. And it's very important. So we... We've been talking last month on the finished work of Christ. And we established specifically about seven to nine pillars of what Christ has finished. We are coming back and we are reconnecting back. And so you hang on, don't go, don't go away. You hang on because we are bouncing back. It's very important. And the believer cannot carry on. Okay, we're already coming back. Praise the Lord. We are working, we are working hard. It's, it's getting better. It's getting better. The devil is a bastard. <laughs> it's getting All better. Right. It looks... so, last month okay. we looked Good. at inheritance in Christ. We got internal life. We also looked at our sonship. We also went deeper as much as what Jesus did, the operation and the works of salvation. So we dealt with all of this decisively. When we come on board, hello, sir. Can you I'm hear me? Yeah, I'm hearing you. Okay. Very clearly. Okay. Uh, sorry for cutting you. Uh, we, you. You talk decisively on the finished work of Christ. We've heard, and of course, the, unfin the ongoing work is useless and the unfinished work is of no use until we, if the believer understands the place of the finished work and grow in the understanding of the finished work. Am I right, sir? Perfect, perfect, perfect. Then we move to the ongoing work. What is this and what does it entail? The ongoing work the of on Christ. The ongoing work of Christ begins with spiritual growth where a believer is now taught to come face to face with his realities in Christ Jesus. Brother Paul will put it like this. We all with open face, beholding the glory of God as in a mirror. We are changed into that same image from glory to glory, glory even as by the spirit of the Lord. So spiritual growth, where teaching comes, sound teaching. The Bible tells us see that descended is he that ascended. When he ascended, he gave gifts to men. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Why? For the perfecting of the saints to do the work mm. of ministry. So the perfecting of the saints is the ongoing work of Christ in the life of the believer, which gives rise to spiritual growth. Because mm. spiritual growth is what gives rise to ministry. Ministry mm. is a fruit of spiritual growth. Then along That's with spiritual growth comes the renewing of the mind. The renewing of mm. the mind is where you all learn so you can relearn. You all learn things you were taught that are not consistent with the scripture so you can relearn really what is sound doctrine in the word of God. So there is spiritual growth. There is a renewing of the mind. There is walking in the spirit. There is coming face to face with your realities of the gifts of God, the gifts of the spirit, the fruits of the spirit, walking in love, which has to do with forgiveness, 
which has to do with the fruit of the spirit towards the brethren, walking in love. Then you have walking in honor. All of these are part of the ongoing work of Christ within the body of Christ in the local assembly or in the believer's life. Thank you, sir. Uh, that will lead us to the unfinished work. I have a scripture here, Hebrew chapter 4 uh, and verse number 1. It said, therefore, since the promise of entering his rest remain, let us fear lest any of you seems to come short of it. For the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word preached unto them did not benefit them because they did not mix faith in those who had it. And he said, for we who have believed have entered his rest. As he has said, as I have sworn in my rod, they shall not enter my rest. However, please sir, take note of this. His works have been finished since the creation of the world. It means that both the work of redemption, both the work of God has been finished from the creation of the world. Then John chapter 5, verse 17, the scripture say, my father walketh. It unto I walk. The work has been finished. Now he's saying, my father walketh. It unto I walk. Does that entail the unfinished work? What is the revelation behind these two, sir? You are free to talk, sir. Well, Josh, you see, first of all, the Old Testament, the Old Testament and the New Testament must be understood. The Old Testament is from Exodus to Malachi because Hebrews chapter 8, verse 8, 9, and 10 says that the Old Covenant began in the day when I took you by the hand and let and you out of Egypt. So Exodus to Malachi is the Old Testament. Old Testament. Genesis is the New Testament which began mm. before the interruption of the Old Testament. Testament because in true. Galatians chapter 3, verse 17, 18, and 19, he said there was a mm. covenant before of God in Christ, Christ. which the law interrupted. Mm. So interrupted. the New Testament predated the Old Testament, or the, the New it Testament before. has always been the plan of God. Now, mm. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is not the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are eyewitness accounts of the humanity of Christ. Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 says, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. So Jesus lived on earth in the incarnation under the law. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are an extension of the law with futuristic promises of the New Testament. The New Testament started from the book of Acts because Matthew chapter, chapter 16 tells us that this is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 16 tells us where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is only of force after men are dead. So until Jesus died, there was no New Testament. So when yes. Jesus said, my father walked in the book of John, he mm. was talking about what he was going to do on the cross. His mm. walk through the cross, death, burial, mm. and resurrection. resurrection. Now in the book of Hebrews where you're reading, he has already finished the work. Mm. It was no more him walking. He has finished the work, the mm. work of salvation, the work of mm. redemption, the work of reconciliation, the work of satisfying the claims of justice for sin, he has finished all of that. Today, he is living, mm. yes, today he is living in the believer. Christ mm. in you. He is living in the believer and mm. carrying out his ongoing work in the life of the believer by the Holy Spirit mm. and carrying out the believer's assignment to preach to the world by the work of the Holy Spirit. Mm. So Thank the you, book sir. of John, the mm. book of John was mm. the promise of his death, burial, and resurrection. He was talking okay. about, my father mm. walked, he tattooed our work. He was walk. pointing to his sacrificial work. Yes. Mm. Okay. That, that is a good revelation. We want to move to the unfinished work. Like you said at the beginning. Can you hear me, sir? Very loud and clear. Okay. Like you said from the beginning, that the word finish work of Christ, the work ongoing, they are not biblical terms. They are not in the book. 
is man's way of trying to describe uh, yeah, exactly. the differences. Uh, we move to the unfinished work of the church from what I can hear from you. I, I may have called it, yeah. it's my own way of describing because sometimes yeah. some topics strikes people's mind yeah. and want to hear what you have to say. Sometimes it's good to be a bit controversial to be understood because this yeah. generation, if you don't pull them, there are things they cannot want to listen to. So that yeah. is why we use that terms, but it's still the same, the, uh, the unfinished work of the church. And one of the unfinished work of the church is the place of prayer. I've heard in most of your teaching, you talk about thanksgiving. But I've also yeah. read that prayers precede thanksgiving in the New Testament. There were many prayers the apostles prayed. The Bible said the effect of the prayer shook a building. A prayer that can shake a building can shake a city. That kind of prayer is a fervent mm. prayer. And the apostle said, we will mm. give ourselves to, the, to, to prayer and to the ministry of the world. So they donated themselves. Yeah. So prayer is a discipline. It's not a gift. It's something you, you have to give yourself to, to be able to yeah. build up. Now, as yeah. much as Christ have delivered us from the cause of the law, Paul was asking the church, pray for me, that God, the Lord will deliver me from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have no yeah. faith. So I want you to throw more light on prayer. Uh, uh, spiritual warfare, aggressive prayer, binding and losing, taking territorial uh, city. Um, uh, we said that Jesus had finished the work, but we saw that Paul the Apostle fought with the beast of Ephesus for door of the gospel to be opened. We also saw that Paul's effectual, fervent doors are open unto me. The, these doors were not doors of business. We are not those to sell crude oil. They were those of the gospel. They say, Satan hindered me. So I saw Paul doing a lot of spiritual warfare uh, in the place of prayer. What kind of prayer is the New Testament expected to pray? Over to you, sir. Well, first of all, there is a difference between mm -hmm. prayers in the Old Testament and prayers in the New Testament. In the oh, Old yes. Testament, it was a prayer to gain God's approval. In the New Testament, we have God's approval in Christ. Already. In the Old Testament, it was a prayer to try to defeat Satan. In the New mm -hmm. Testament, Satan is already a defeated foe under our feet. In the mm -hmm. Old Testament, it was a prayer to see if God will do something. In the mm -hmm. New Testament, God has done everything for us. So what prayers do we pray in the New Testament? Testament? Like you rightly observed, Brother Paul listed a number of prayers for us. First of all, he said, I pray that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, enlightened. Mm. that you may know the hope of your calling. Number two, that you may know the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the, the saints. saints. Mm. Number three, that you may know the exceeding greatness of his power to us, what who believe, mm. according to the working okay. of his mighty, mighty power, power, which he wrought in Christ, Christ when he yeah. raised him from, from the, the dead. dead. If yes. you observe it, he didn't say that you may have, he said yeah. that you may know, that you, you may know, know, that you may know. Yeah. Dealing with epignosis, coming yes. to a place of accurate understanding and of it. what you already have. Mm. That's ah. the first premise for prayer in the New Testament. And most times that you may know, sir, hold on, sir. That you may know and that you may see. Yes. Is, any, is, is that interwoven? You may know, you may see. see seeing is knowing. Okay. okay. Seeing okay. is knowing. Okay. That you may know, that is that you may see. See. Okay. Uh, so it's the same. So okay. if you observe, he prayed the same prayer for Philemon. He said, pray mm -hmm. for Philemon that the communication of your faith may be effectual, that you may acknowledge. The word acknowledge there is the same word for knowing. So most of the New Testament prayers are prayers for the knowledge of what Christ has already done. Oh. That is why all of them are like prayers of thanksgiving. Now, you talked about where Paul said, I fought with the beast of Ephesus. When he used the word beast of Ephesus, he wasn't talking of literal beast. 
the beast of Ephesus there is a metaphor. It's a figure of speech. And what he was dealing with there was persecution. Persecution that came to him because of the gospel. People that tried to make things difficult for him because of the gospel. When he even said, pray for me that I be delivered from wicked and unreasonable men. For all men have no faith. If you look at the pretext and the post-text, he's talking about persecution from people that do not believe the gospel. Persecution from people that don't love the gospel. Persecution from people that hate the gospel. So that deliverance is not deliverance from the devil. It's deliverance from human beings. Deliverance from people that will persecute you and attack the gospel. Then Brother Paul also prayed. He prayed that you will walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful unto every good work. He prayed that you may be sincere and without offense. All of these are prayers that has to do with ministry. So that you will do the ministry with sincerity. You will do the ministry without offense. You will walk worthy of the Lord in the ministry. All of those are prayers for revelation knowledge and prayers for the ministry, the preaching of the gospel. Even what we call spiritual warfare, even though that word is not in the Bible, is an explanation. But what Brother Paul was teaching there in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, when he says we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh, had to do with evangelism, had to do with preaching the gospel. Because when you are preaching the gospel, you are in a warfare. You are pulling down mindsets. You are pulling down belief systems. You are pulling down, you know, theories of men, opinions. You are casting them down so you can establish the knowledge of Christ in the heart of the listeners. So most of the New Testament prayers are prayers to know what is already yours in Christ Jesus so you can walk in its reality. Mm. Wow. And then he said, pray as a vision. Hello, sir. Are you still? Yes, I'm Hello, here. Sir. I'm here. Very yeah, fully, Ephes- fully. Ephes- yes, Ephesians 6, 18. Pray in the spirit always with all kinds of prayers and yes. supplication. All yes. kinds of all ma- And our translation say all manner So the prayers. active word there, the active word in that verse is in the spirit. The active in word the in that verse is in the spirit. In the spirit. That yes. means all prayers should be prayed in tongues. Mm. <laughs> all prayers should be prayed in tongues. <laughs> Oh my so God. when you are yes. blasting in tongues, in mm. tongues, you are praying all prayers. Some of them okay. your mind can't handle, but the spirit of God through you is channeling the prayers to the right places where the prayers are needed. So that's why mm. Brother Paul will say, I pray in tongues more than all of you put together because yes. the believer ought to pray more in tongues than in English all the time. So that's why in that scripture, the active word there is in the spirit. Mm. Praying always in the spirit in the spirit always in the spirit praying in the spirit, spirit means praying in tongues that's mm. and that first corinthians 14 brother paul was here i will pray in the spirit and i will pray I with will, my, understanding. my understanding because praying in the spirit makes my understanding unfruitful because i'm praying in tongues we yes sir we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against are, are you there sir fully Hello, here sir. fully here we wrestle, we are talking about the same dimension of prayer because we are now yeah. understood the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament prayer. Uh, he said, we wrestled not against flesh and blood. Again, I want to drive that point home because yeah. when you said it, uh, 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 Paul did pray, most of the prayer was to handle human wickedness. But here the scripture yeah. said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, yes. ruler yes. darkness of this world, spiritual so, weakness. So there's a wrestling somewhere. Explain to so, us, please. The, that, that word wrestle, there is not wrestling like WWF. That <laughs> word wrestle. <laughs> like like Hokogan and the rest. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that oh, word, my God. That, uh, that word wrestle there is enforcing. Yes. Enforcing, enforcing what is already yours. yours. You are not trying to get it. You have already got it. It's not to folding enforce. Trousers. Then he now yes, says, sir. yes, he's not folding trousers or pouring kerosene and nicotine. You know? As, what as is dealing with is, exactly. What is dealing yeah. with there is enforcing the victory that is already yours in Christ. 
Remember, two thousand years ago, Jesus called principalities and powers and, powers. and made a public show of them. So when he says you are wrestling against principalities and powers, what he's simply saying is that the things that will engage you are things that has been defeated. So what do you mm. do? You enforce the victory that is already yours. That's why Satan, mm. I mean, Paul will say, your adversary, the devil, goes about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Then he now mm. said, whom you must resist steadfast in the faith. Mm. That is, in the faith. Stay, stay in the faith. Maintain your mm. place in the faith in what Christ has done and refuse mm. to change your confession. Stay there. I have defeated the devil. I am in victory. Mm. I am what the word says mm. I am. Even when circumstances mm. are contrary, you stay and keep maintaining what Christ has already done on your behalf. So that is what we call warfare. It's not warfare. a fight. It's an enforcement of your realities in Christ Jesus. Does it still follow with that verse 13? Take up the whole armor of Christ, of God, where you may be able to resist to stand the evil, the, the wells of the devil. Yes. I haven't done all yes. to stand. We need more explanation yes. on that. Yes, sir. What he's saying is, he's not saying you should wear the armor. As yeah. a believer, you already have the armor on. You have the breastplate of righteousness because you are the righteousness of God. Yes. You have the helmet of salvation because you're already saved. You mm. have the belt of truth because you have Jesus in you. You have your shoes of peace because you have Christ who is the Prince of Peace. You have mm. your shield of faith because you have Jesus, the author and the finisher of faith. You have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, because you have Jesus, the word of God. So you already have Jesus in you. Now, when he says you should put on, what he's simply saying is acknowledge, recognize that you already have these things. It is recognizing them that gives you a stand in the evil day. When you know that you're already fully dressed, what Christ has done is complete. You do not fight for victory. You fight from victory. victory. You function victory. from a place of trial. Yes. Thank you, sir. Where is the place of love in the unfinished work of the church? The place of love. Now, the place of, the place of love is where the work is for the believer. Mm. Because the believer has the love of God has already been shed abroad shed in the heart abroad. of the believer. Yeah. The believer is born of God, is born of love. The believer is a child of love. So walking mm. in love now has to do with interpersonal relationships. Mm. When I relate with you, I relate with brethren, I relate mm. with the people that God has surrounded me with, I must mm. be able to walk with them in love. Walking mm. in love has to do with the fruit of the spirit, which is already in the believer. Love, mm. joy, peace, long-suffering, mm. gentleness, meekness, kindness. All of these are expressions of the love work in the believer. So Brother Paul will say, since you are born of the spirit, walk in the spirit. Mm. Walking in the spirit is give expression to what you already are. Give expression. Now that expression will come as you grow. As you grow in knowledge, as you grow in the things of the spirit, as you grow in understanding, naturally, the, your nature, the gifts of the fruit of the spirit is the nature of the born again man. As you grow, the, the nature will find expression. Pressure. That is why teaching, 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 teaching the believer is critical, very critical. So there's a, a lot of, um, uh, I still want to digress a little, a lot of, um, attack comes that most time the preaching of the new testament or the preaching of grace does not apply with the current situations of what people are going through somebody is dying you say to him he should believe he tells you he believe he's still dying he's still broke and so the, the, because the, the marriage i want you to explain to me the marriage between the realities people go through and the reality in Christ. How long does it take? Because that is why most times the, the preaching of grace is not receiving that celebration, especially in Africa, because of too much of pains and suffering. A man can't pay his rent. You tell him Christ has paid it all for him. Christ has finished everything for him. He can't understand. He needs time to grow in the interim. Is there anything that should be given to him until he comes to the fullness of that knowledge? Otherwise, you are losing him to many people who will give him something temporary and bad. 
it's, it's a okay. somewhat light on that. Okay, let me, let me, yes, I know what you're saying. Let me explain something to you. Miracles, miracles don't define a believer. Miracles don't define a believer. A believer is defined by faith in Christ. Otherwise, if miracles define believers, Jesus multiplied bread and fishes. He gave mm. to them to eat. When he told them about eating his body, they all disappeared. They took off. Most mm. of the people Jesus healed, yeah, most mm. of them Jesus healed in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Most of them were mm. unbelievers. And they never even knew Jesus. They never even cared about Jesus. So miracles don't define believers. However, mm. however, mm. miracles are an expression of the goodness of God. And you, Josh, you know me very well. You know me very well. You know that I believe in miracles. I have yes. seen miracles. Over you know, 30 years. <laughs> I pray for the sick. I see mm. miracles. I see things happen. But yes. the point is, we do not emphasize those things mm. because mm. a man's life does not consist in the abundance of things he possesses. Mm. What we emphasize is the relationship a man has with God. For example, I used to say, even Lazarus, who was raised from the dead after four days, didn't he die again? He, he died, died again. again. <laughs> he didn't live forever. Uh -huh. He died again. So, mm. you know, so the, the mm. point we're making is, you don't need mm. Jesus to make money. Mm. You don't need Jesus to break through. To get a car. You don't need Jesus to succeed in the secular world. You only yes. need a good brain, good head, good mm. skill to know what to Madness. do in the, in the market. Yeah, in the mm. marketplace, that's all you need. Because, Josh, mm. before Jesus came, people had cars. Before Jesus came, mm. people had houses. Mm. Before Jesus came, mm. people were rich. Mm. People were more billionaires. Mm. So that means what Jesus mm. came for is not to give us material acquisition. What Jesus came that's for right. is to deliver us from what concerns everybody. Sin, mm. sin. So in the church, what we should do is let the people understand that what you get from God is the forgiveness of sin and sonship, mm. a vibrant mm. relationship that guarantees mm. you eternity. However, mm. after that, it is your responsibility as a believer to develop skills, mm. sharpen your skills, learn the ropes, go to mm. the marketplace, get jobs. If the job you're doing is not paying you enough, develop a new skill, get another job. If it's not paying you enough, develop another skill, get a new job. Believers should go out and get jobs and develop skills because if they do that, they will compete well in the marketplace and make money than mm. sitting down and waiting for God to give them money. Which God um, has already or going around them doing generational causes breaking or doing generational or breaking, going grandfather pushing you exactly. Yes. And those things have not helped the body of Christ because mm. all of a sudden it messes up the mind of a man. And then mm. this man that you are putting under that bondage can no more think beyond that bar that you have put him. Mm. Meanwhile, there is nothing like generational causes for a child of God. Mm. There is nothing like ancestral covenants for a child of God. Mm. A child of God has been delivered from sin, which is the root of all evil. He's been delivered from Satan. All he needs to do now is realize who he is, go out to the marketplace boldly, mm. and, and rely on the leading of the spirit. The leading of the spirit now is the advantage he has that the unbeliever does not have. He has the You're leading right. of the spirit. Sir, the spirit will show him where to go, what to do. I've, I've also discovered, sir, even when the witch died, the uncle died, the people are still struggling in their in their. They are still their poor. Poverty. They are they still, are still poor, poor because... Still, they are, they are, when they are, you have even cleared everybody, they are still asking you, why yes. is my situation still like that? Exactly, Josh. Because yeah. their problem was not anything ancestral. It is in their yeah. mandula of Langata. It's in their mentality. It's in their mentality. Yeah. And in their skills. For yeah. example, now, COVID-19 has changed the world. COVID-19 yes. has changed the world. You are there right. are people that tomorrow will not have jobs because yeah. what they read in school is useless to the future. The That's things right. they have now will no more be useful tomorrow. So people yeah. that are smart now, We'll start developing mm. new skills. We we'll start mm. re-strategizing. We we'll start mm. attending new courses to sharpen and prepare themselves so that when the lockdown is over and the new opportunities racing. open up, they'll be relevant. But mm. if they sit down and they are praying in the church and they are fasting, 
they will discover that they will get poorer and poorer and become a liability to the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. So that is why what the believer has in Christ is the leading of the spirit, your mm -hmm. sonship in Christ, freedom from sin, freedom from Satan. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. it is the responsibility of the believer to go to school, develop skills, learn, go for apprenticeship, go and be trained so that you can... I was asking somebody this same thing yesterday. When we mm -hmm. went to school, Josh, the textbooks mm -hmm. we read in school, were they written by pastors? No. The textbooks we read in classes, were they written by, written by pastors? No. no sir. All the textbooks, whether psychology, sociology, chemistry, biology, physics, some of them are written by people who don't even care about God. Yet we okay. read them to be able to succeed in the secular world because the secular world belongs to all of us, believer, non-believer, Muslim, Christian, everybody. So when we go there, it's a level playing ground. It is the things you learned in school and the skills you mm. acquire that will work in that place. So even mm. if you pray, after the prayer, when you go there, you must keep the prayer, first of all, aside and bring out your skills. I was asking mm. somebody, I said, you people have been ag getting angry with me because you say, I say that God does not multiply money. Let me ask you a very simple, honest question, uh, Dr. Josh. Mm. Let's say we pack an aircraft. You know I didn't read aviation. Mm. And I now say, Josh, with your family, come into the plane. Let mm. me fly you. Will you mm. enter the plane? You will not no. enter. I will give you a screen that I have purging. I need to purge. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Even if I am speaking yes. in tongues and anointing the aircraft with yes, oil, sir. you will not enter that no. plane because mm. you know that I don't have the skill to fly That's that right. plane. That's right. So that, that means beyond all that we do in church, People must be encouraged to go out, develop skills, sharpen their skills, position themselves to take the world by storm and make that money and bring it so we can preach this gospel to the nations of the earth. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, we, are, we are catching the fire. What, yes. what I want to ask you, sir, there are many ladies who are not married. Yes. You teach them the word of God. You yes. are who you are in Christ. They believe it. Yes. They speak it. Yes. Every now and yes. then, they keep telling you, Papa, we do. We are still looking yes. at you. I mean, yes. they make you feel guilty as if you are living in the bedroom of God <laughs> and you have what it takes to give them and you are not giving them. So the yes. pastor is compelled to be able to see a vision he should not see. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, what, what is your take on this? It's a serious matter. Yeah, Too many people want up. to marry. They desire, they dress well, they are good. They, yes. are, they follow Jesus. Yes, sir. Over to you, sir. Yes, sir. Josh, first of all, the yes. reason why many ladies are putting pressures on pastors is because yes. we, the pastors, have made them think we are living in God's bedroom. So <laughs> we, must, we must come down from our high horse and make them know <laughs> that yes. we are nothing. It is yes. Jesus that is everything. We are That's what right. we are because of Christ. You know, mm. they must have to see that. Once they mm. see that, we refocus them on Christ. Take their attention mm. from us, put their mm. attention on Christ. And that is what the message of the grace of God does. Brother mm. Paul said, we mm. preach not ourselves, but Christ mm. and him crucified. Ourselves, your mm. servant. That's the first thing. Mm. Then the second mm. thing is, you know, some people have been told that they have spiritual husband. I don't mm. know where they got that from. I was mm. taught that when I was growing up in ministry. And we I preached it so we many all, years ago before. We, do a we all did it. But mm. when you read the Bible, mm. you find out that mm. the Bible says that there is no marriage in the spirit. So there is nothing like spiritual husband. husband there yes. is nothing like spiritual wife. Jesus there's said no it marriage. himself. He said yes, you Jesus have. said this. Mm. Yes, because you know not the scripture, not the power of yes. God. And remember, mm. some people yes. came to Jesus and said, we had a brother. Mm. He married, and after he married, he died. Mm. Mm. Then the wife married the second brother. After mm. she married the second brother, she died. Mm. He died. She, died. she married yes. the third brother. After mm. she married the third brother, he died. She married Please the fourth press brother. Please press your button. She Somebody the needs to be blessed. Brother, she died. Hold on, sir. Hold on, sir. Please, wherever you're watching, on. press the share button. One share, 20 people will come on board, and this could be their total deliverance. I'm telling you, the word. Is the mystery of deliverance. Very so wherever you very are, please important. press the share button very because important. something that is applicable, the man of God is demystifying it. And it's important for us to listen to this father of faith.
because I've sat under him for more than 30 years and I know he's a studio. So open your heart, shoot it out, press the share button, every one of us, press the share button and let's continue to watch and continue to watch. Press the share button as you're watching, something will happen. Go ahead, sir, over to you. Oh, they asked yes, Jesus. The marriage. You are talking after, about she, the marriage. after she married, yes. The, yes, the woman married the first husband. The man died. She married his brother. The brother died. She married the third brother. The brother died. She married to the seventh brother. So yeah. one woman killed seven brothers. <laughs> and the brothers were very stupid. After two died, the rest didn't take off. They were still marrying her and dying. Yeah. Then they now asked Jesus. They said, on the day of resurrection, whose wife will she be among the seven? Yeah. You know what Jesus said to them? Very instructive. He yeah. said, in the spirit, people do not marry. Marry. They no marriage in the spirit. So mm. there is nothing like spiritual wife. There is nothing like spiritual husband. None of those. Je mm. Mm. Wow. Something is happening here. It's freezing, but we are bouncing back. We must get this right. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Are you there, sir? It's freezing, but we will get there. Everybody hold on. Something is a cocoon is about to be broken. All so right. It's very, yes, sir. We can hear you now. It very went, good. It went still. Reverend Josh, can you yes, can you hear? Very good. Yes, yeah, sir. it was network. Okay, yes, good. Sir. Now you see, Jesus now said to them on the resurrection day, this in the spirit world, there is no marriage, there's no mm. spiritual husband, there's no spiritual wife, it does not exist in the spirit world. Mm. So any lady that is thinking, maybe I have a husband in the spirit or I have a wife in the spirit, that is why I'm not married. You have been deceived. There's no mm. such thing in the spirit. The next question I know they are going to ask is, then if there is no such thing, why is it that in my dream, I have sex mm. in the dream? Why is it in my dream, a man is always following me in the dream? It is in their mind. It mm. is in their subconscious mind. Because doctrine defines the subconscious experience. Mm. Doctrine defines the subconscious ex experience. It is what you, yes, it is what you are taught that mm. will play back in your subconscious mind. Let me give you an mm. illustration. A boy mm. is playing football in the afternoon. He plays and yes. plays and plays and plays. Then he sleeps mm. in the night. You see the little boy stand up in the dream and begins to play yes. ball. The you say Ogale, Ogale, play the Ogale, ball, Ogale. Ogale, sit down. Yes. Ogale, sit down. Yes. And yes. Ogale will not sit down because <laughs> Ogale is replaying what he played in the afternoon in the subconscious. You are right, So sir. what you are taught is what yeah. plays back in your subconscious. It's not because you're possessed. So the first thing is a lady must go beyond that mindset, free herself mm. from that mindset, see herself mm. in Christ, whom the son mm. sets free. Is free indeed. It's free. You have indeed. not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but the spirit of mm. adoption, whereby we cry, Abba Father. Abba Stand Father. fast in the liberty, where with Christ has set you free, and be not free. entangled again Tangled with the again. yoke of bondage. bondage. For whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Free. That's the indeed. first thing. Then, then, number two, the reason why many ladies do not get married is character. Mm. Character. Mm. Character. Character. Mm. Some ladies, their character does not allow them to have a good marriage. That's why mm. the Bible says, make no friendship with an angry man. So if a mm. lady is given to anger, she may not get a husband. Mm. Because the Bible says, make no friendship with an angry man. Otherwise, mm. you will learn his ways. Mm. The Bible says, make no friendship with a drunkard. A man that drinks alcohol may not get a wife. May not get a wife. Same thing with a lady. The Bible also says, the Bible also says, stay away from any brother or sister that is given to fornication. Mm. So somebody that sleeps around may likely mm. not get somebody that will marry them. So mm. the attitude, character, most times is the reason why. I mean, Josh, marriage, marriage is there's nothing like Christian marriage. Mm. There is nothing like Christian marriage. Marriage mm. is not Christian. Mm. Marriage is a human institution. That's why unbelievers mm. get married, pagans mm. get married, Christians get married. So there's nothing like Christian marriage, but there are mm. Christians in marriage. There's nothing like Christian mm. marriage, Christians but there are Christians marriage. in marriage. 
That is mm. why it is not right that a believer is fasting and praying for husband when an unbeliever mm. is marrying three and divorcing them, marrying four and divorcing them. That means there is mm. something natural. There are some mm. natural laws that the brother mm. or the sister is not observing. There are mm. some natural laws. Then remember mm. the scripture says, two cannot work mm. together except they be agreed. Mm. There's also mm. that place of agreement that can make a lady mm. get married. So some mm. of these factors are the reason. It's not demons, mm. it's not Satan, it's not because mm. you're a bad person. There is mm. more to eat than that. Mm. That's just the little I have. Wow. This is serious. This is serious. So the, the, the lady needs to work on her character, needs to work on yep. her lifestyle and all of that. And her uh, so identity, from, yes. Yes. What From what I can see, the church is at the junction of the ongoing work. Because too many babes in the faith and too many preachers that are babies. So instead of spending time yes. to work on the congregation to for mindset transformation, yes, we, we, we go the shortcut yes. and at the end we do not build them as we should. So the, I'm sure yes. you have a word for the for pastors. They, they need to pastors. labor a word. Mm. Yes, pastors must give themselves to the word of God. In the book of 2 Timothy 2.15, brother Paul said to Timothy, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The word study there is not study like reading in a class. The word study there is be diligent in the Greek. Be diligent. That is, there's a diligence. There's a studious approach. There is labor that is required in studying mm. the word of God. Now, in as a study to show yourself approved, a workman, a minister that needs mm. not to be ashamed, rightly dividing. That word rightly dividing is a Greek word, is the word ototomio. Ototomio mm. means mm. to cut through a path, to cut through a path, ototomio, ototomio, to cut through a path. It is the same word that the writer of Proverbs used when he said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He shall direct your path. That word direct your path is ototomio. It means to cut through a path. That is in Bible study, there is a path a preacher must cut through. And that path will bring clarity to the message. To cut through that path is a studious work very studious work. It takes a lot from the preacher of the gospel. That is why the apostle said, we will give ourselves our to prayer and the ministry, ourselves. yes, mm. and the ministry of the word. So real ministry is word ministry. The teaching of the word, you know, the, the rightly dividing of the word, the, 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 the labor to, to study it and the labor to communicate it effectively in a mm. bid to bring out the revelation of Christ from Genesis to Revelation. Because it is when people see Christ that they begin to mature. In the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verse 25, 26, and 27, Brother Paul said that there is a mystery that has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made uh, manifest to his saints, to whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this of mystery, glory which is in the sense, which is Christ mm. in you, the hope of in glory. You. Then he added, the yes, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Then he added, whom we preach, whom we preach. So mm. our preaching is the preaching of Christ in you. In the book of Galatians you. chapter one, verse six. Yes, brother Paul said to the church in Galatia, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him. You are so soon removed from him, not from mm. him. From, from him, him. okay, Christ in John 1 45. Yes, from Christ mm. in John 1 45. Mm. Philip find it Nathaniel and said to Nathaniel, We have mm. found him, we mm. have found him, not mm. it. We have found mm. him in Luke chapter 24, verse 25, 26, and 27. On the way to Emmaus, Jesus said to those guys, Oh fools, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things? and to enter into his glory. Next verse. And beginning at Moses 
and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures, scriptures the things those things concerning himself. himself. So the message is Christ. In Luke 24, 44, Jesus said to the disciples, these are the words which I speak unto you while I was with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written mm. in the law of Moses, in the prophets, in the Psalms concerning me. So mm. we've got to know Christ enough. You know, Josh, in Matthew chapter 16, the disciples of Jesus were with Jesus, but didn't know Jesus. A preacher can be preaching Jesus, but does not know Jesus. They were with Jesus. They even preached Jesus to Jesus in Luke 24. They said to Jesus, are you a stranger in town? Have you not heard about Jesus? They are preaching Jesus to Jesus. That is why Jesus called them fools. He said to them, you are fools. And the Bible said, when their eyes opened and they saw him, he vanished. He vanished because Jesus doesn't want you to know him in pictures. Yes, he wants you to know him in the scriptures. The revelation in scriptures must be from the scriptures. So mm. the preacher has a huge responsibility to break mm. down the scriptures and bring mm. Christ out of the scriptures mm. and feed Christ to the people as a diet. Mm. And when people feed on Christ, they grow. Mm. In Colossians 2, 6 and 7, it says, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, therefore, Walk ye walk. also like that in him. That is the mm. same way you receive Christ. Is the same way you walk in him. Walk. How did you receive Christ? By grace through faith. How do you walk in Christ? By grace through faith. Not of works. You walk in Christ the same way you receive him. So the diet of the believer is to feed on Christ. Men of God, therefore, must give themselves to the word of God enough to be able to break down the word, bring out diet, so that believers can eat and be nourished and stand their ground. Josh, it is in times like COVID-19 yes. that every preacher will know whether he was working before or he was playing. Because playing. now, right. believers no more gather in church. It is what That's you true. put in them that will determine whether they stay with you or not. If not. what you gave them was miracle, if they find another miracle worker, they will follow. If what you gave them was signs and wonders, if they find another signs and wonder worker, they will follow. But the disciples of Jesus said to Jesus, to whom shall we, Where go? Shall we go? Where shall we you go? You have the words of, word eternal, of life. eternal life. So that is why the labor is labor in word and doctrine. Labor in word and doctrine. What word? Rightly divided, divided. word of truth. The word of truth. So preachers, wow. critical, mm. very critical. Wow, we're already clapping in the studio. So it, lo it looks to me like there's a shift in the spirit. Yes. God is moving out of the church to, yes. to, to the wall. I mean, to the crowd, yes. To, yes. to the wall. You know, yes. we we're told that, uh, uh, I don't know how to put it, but uh, we, the generation I was speaking to, uh, Jamal Brahim, he said that okay. we are the last generation of mega churches. Building mega, believe. mega churches. He said we are the last generation I because believe. now from this COVID-19, it is clear that the believer need a personal relationship with Christ. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. There is a shift. I don't know if you agree with it and throw more light in that. Maybe just one. Josh, the shift has already happened. It has never <laughs> happened in my generation. It has hey. never happened in my lifetime that mm. a, the entire world will lock down. Economies mm. are collapsing. People mm. are dying in thousands. I've never seen this kind of thing all my life. Churches mm. cannot meet. Mosques mm. cannot meet. Since the day of Muhammad, since Muhammad mm. was on earth, this is the first year Muslims did not go to, to Hajj. This is the first year. It has never they happened. They didn't go to visit him in Mecca. Mm. No, 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 no Mecca at all, mm. no pilgrimage. Yes. And let me tell mm. you, Josh, it may never happen again that mm. the churches or mosques be allowed to gather people in thousands. It may never happen. Wow. Talk to me, sir. Happen. Talk to me, sir. It's a serious matter. Mm. Again. They are already. Mm. Mm. The network, we must get this network. Global Everybody, body. hang on, something is happening here. 
Just there is a shift. Global yes, bodies now are doing mm. meetings virtually. Global mm. corporations are doing meetings virtually. Presidents of nations are meeting virtually. World Health Organization, they are meeting virtually. Executives, Senate members of countries are meeting virtually. Even and today, the yes, church is also I, meeting I met virtually. with my head of department all right in my bedroom. I met with all the group leaders. So now, yes, sir. Mm. So now what will be happening is mm. the people we empower by sound teaching, the people we mm. empower by sound mm. teaching in our churches are the people that will begin house churches, house mm. churches, house yes. churches, gathering of five, gathering of 10, gathering of 15, five, 10, 15, 20, five, 10, and you will have them scattered all over the place. And that is where you will have a powerful church rising because that is where true discipleship which is the mandate mm. of the church will begin to take place. True mm. discipleship will begin to take place. Wow. This is a very serious, it's very deep. It's very yep. deep. Sir, uh, yep. I don't know what is your take on the vaccine that is being made. Uh, the bill was passed, second and uh, first reading and second reading. Within the shortest time, we have not seen the vaccine. All manner of talk is going on on the vaccine and uh, it's sending shiver around the world. I don't know if you have any clue of what I'm saying. Yes, well, the first thing is I have not studied very much about the vaccine. I'm still observing. I'm still reading to find out. But what is sure is Jesus said, be of good cheer. cheer. I have overcome I have the world. Be of good cheer. cheer. I have overcome. Secondly, Jesus said, Whatever is born of God overcometh the world. Number three, Jesus said, I give unto you eternal life and you shall never perish. Never None perish. shall be able to pluck you out of my hand. Out of my, hand. my father that gave you to me is greater me. than all. And nobody me. can pluck you out of my father's hand. Yes. Once you realize that, if they like, let them be calculating their vaccines. What we carry... <laughs> Greater is he that is in you is in than us. he that yes. is in the world. Oh, as yes. long as we are here, Satan mm. cannot run riot. Our no, he presence cannot. here, he says, he you are the salt. You are the salt of the earth. The job mm. of salt is to preserve. As long That's as we are here, Satan is contained. So yes. relax. We, and let's keep preaching. We let's continue. keep preaching the. Let's yes. keep preaching the gospel. There are people who say can't contain. <laughs> yes, let's keep preaching the gospel. In case, in, <laughs> in case you have any question, you just throw it now because we just have five minutes to go off. You can throw in your question by from your just write it on the comment, and then I will see it and I will pick it up. And also my editors will pick it up and write it and give it to me to also add. But sir, uh, we we want you to give us a word. Maybe what is God saying to you for the now? Just speak to us for just three, five minutes, let our spirit be stirred. I know you've spoken so much, I've taken so much virtue out of you, but I still believe there is more from where it came from. Yes, there is. What, is what, what I believe God is doing right now is raising disciples. Believers should give themselves to sound study. Believers should take advantage of this lockdown and go back to their Bibles. Get sound materials, sit down and start building them. Mm. Start building themselves because when the lockdown is over and people mm. Mm. hold it, don't go off, don't go off. We are coming back, it will pick up again. We are coming back. You can write your questions. Uh, we, will we are coming back again, it's going to pick up again. So, write your questions and then we can take it off from there. From whatever we have shared, you still didn't understand. You can write your question. We're ready to pick it up right now and answer when we come back. It's very important. The, the, yes, sir. Okay, sir, we are back. Can you hear I'm me, here. sir? I'm here. Okay, we were not yes, hearing the last one. Well. We were not hearing in the last one minute. So, sir, I okay, don't know so what I was know. saying, what, yes, sir. Yes, what I was saying was that at this lockdown time, it is time for believers to start feeding, start studying, oh. look for materials, mm. sound Christian resources. Make yourself attend a personal Bible school. 
Start preparing yourself because when the lockdown is over, a lot of people are going to ask too many questions. A lot of people are going to start seeking for God, the knowledge of God. There are going to be a lot of questions and only matured believers will be able to proffer answers. Remember, we have a mandate to go and make disciples. We have a mandate to preach the gospel to every Christian. And this is the time for the assignment. That's the first thing. Number two, believers should begin to develop skills, develop new skills, look at the terrain, find out what is going to work and what is not going to work. And if what you know is what is not going to work, develop new skills. If you already have skills, sharpen your skills. Yes, sharpen your skills. Spend don't be telling us to pray on the, the no, don't be telling us to pray on the dead horse. That, that no, no, idea. No, 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 no. Obsolete no, no, information. No, 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 no. Yes, sir. Very important. Give yourself to prayer. Spend time in tongues. Pray in the spirit. And then as you pray in the spirit, you have ideas, you have concepts, you have you know innovations, you have creativity. You'll be able to position yourself strategically so that the moment it's over and the world begins to run again, you will not be crawling. You will be running because, Josh, new millionaires are going to rise. Yes. New billionaires are going to rise. Mm. New companies are going to rise. Mm. Some old billionaires will give way. Old mm. millionaires will give way. So companies mm. that were relevant before will no more be relevant. So mm. people must position themselves and prepare themselves to, to be relevant and to make impact even as a coronavirus in the post-corona world. Those are the things believers should be thinking about. First of all, study the word, prepare yourself for ministry, prepare yourself to be an evangelist, teaching and preaching the word of God. Then secondly, prepare yourself to be relevant in the secular world. That, that means this is the unfinished work of the church, which everybody must be involved. So evangelism, it, yeah, yes. evangelism is for all of us. Prayer is yes. for all of us. Discipleship is for all of us. And giving for the work of God is for all of us. All of that is part of our responsibilities to get the gospel out. Someone is asking, how is he going to get your books, sir? Your books. Oh, my books, my books, my books. If you can send an email to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. My name, Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. And order for books, our office will supply him. Jerome is asking a question. Jesus said, no man has ever seen the father before. But Elijah was taken to heaven. Enoch was taken to heaven. Is it angels no, they, they went to see? No, they were was not taken to heaven. No, huh? they were not taken to heaven. The <laughs> Old Testament. Okay. <laughs> the that is the explanation he wants. Yeah, the Old Testament say Enoch walked with God and he was without. The Old Testament say Elijah was taken by the whirlwind. But you know, the Old Testament is explained by the New Testament. The Old mm -hmm. Testament is Jesus concealed. The New Testament is Jesus revealed. Jesus revealed. So the New Testament reveals the Old Testament. So in the New Testament, the book of Hebrews chapter 11 tells us, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of mm. things not seen. For by it the mm. elders obtained good report. Then he now said, mm. Amen, by faith. Enoch, mm. by faith. By faith. You see, he talked about Enoch by faith. Then in verse 11, he now said, this all died. Mm. So Enoch didn't go to heaven. He died. Elijah mm. didn't go to heaven. He died. It's just that their died. own death was not the normal die. Normal death. Mm. It was a different mm. kind of death. But they died mm. because no man has gone to heaven until Jesus rose from the dead. It is after his resurrection that now all the people that died that were in paradise were given eternal life and they all rose with Jesus at the day of resurrection. Wow. Somebody say, excuse me, sir, please explain what you mean by the last church of thousands? Hello. What Mega we mean by church of the thousands. Church of, yes, what mm. we mean is that this is the last generation from the way the trend of things are going worldwide, where you will see people gathering in thousands. Because even football, even soccer, football, mm. you know, uh, Donald Trump was telling America that there will be no more stadium football for a long time. People will be watching wow. football on television. That means even footballers will soon be broke. They have to yes, look for that. that soccer team. will no that they will mm. play the soccer in the stadiums, but people will watch it at home. Wow. That they will not gather in stadiums. People mm. watch at home because they are not sure that the crowd will gather and coronavirus will not spread. So because <laughs> of the nature of the infection of the disease, is why they are taking such laws and legislations globally. 
Mm. So when you see the way it's going, you can tell that they may not allow churches to gather in thousands. Even if they do, it will be with social distancing. You know, like, you know, already, they already said churches can meet 50, 50 mm. people with social distancing. So if you have a church of 1,000 people, how many, how many times will you gather 50, 50, 50 to preach to them? So that's why the church must be created. Maybe you do 24, service, 24 services. That that means means the next you day. Not, <laughs> you, you will not live very long. <laughs> because you will kill yourself with stress. So yeah. that is why the church must be proactive, must begin to mm. plan. You know, Josh, the truth of the matter is, it is churches mm. are not closed. Though. They have not closed down churches. So The building mm -hmm. is not the church. The people yes. are the church. The church yes. is marching out. The church is waxing stronger. Like me and you are fellowshipping now. If it's Already. before we can't yeah. fellowship like this now, no. I wouldn't have been yeah. able to see you like this. I will have That's had to true. buy a ticket, fly to Abuja, yeah. stay in the hotel, That's go true. to the south. Yes. But we can meet yeah. like this every day if we want and, three times just a be day. Life. <laughs> and just be studying. And yeah. the anointing is flowing. Revelation knowledge is flowing. The power of That's God right. is flowing. Nothing is, right. nothing is tough. Instead, there is more efficiency. Yeah. So we must mm. cash in on what is going on and utilize it in the advantage of the preaching of the gospel. I tend to believe you, sir, because many people are asking questions. They're asking questions of where is the efficacy of the men of God and the grace they carry. Many, many questions. A lot of the unbelievers are asking, believers are asking. We are going through a lot. So when we come out of the COVID, a lot of things are going to be readjusted. I believe that, and there will be a lot of changes. Yes, sir. I'm positive. Very yes, positive. Sir. Our world has changed. And it will never be the way it used to be, ever, never. Dama Brahim say now that there is no longer large gathering, what is the fate of big auditoriums and uh, buildings? He said, I asked Dama Brahim that question, and he said, he said they are all over for now. And uh, I saw you hit on that. It's a very serious uh, uh, matter. So the church need to refocus again and readjust. Refocus uh, the strategies. And let me tell you this. Let me tell you, Josh, this is the finest hour of the church, believe me. Because when we begin to have little, little gatherings, people will study the word of God with a complete attention. There'll be a lot of strong believers raised. I mean, just imagine, imagine China. China, where people are not allowed to gather in thousands. That's where you have the biggest church in the world because people are gathering underground. And there's a lot of spiritual growth going on in China. Okay, so Iran, what of Iran? Iran, the amount even of Iran. Christians. Yes, even exactly. Pakistan, I went. The amount of exactly. Christians they are producing in Pakistan. Exactly. It, it, yes. And, and these, are not, these are not bread and butter Christians. These are not miracle seekers. These are people that are serious about a relationship with God. They are not looking mm. for God for anything. They are looking for God for God himself. They are not seeking mm. for things. You know, so something is happening and we must see, you know, what the church can use this period to do to advance the cause of Christ. It looks like the pastor will take the back seat and Jesus have to take the front the front That's uh, the way. seat now. Uh, that is what That's the, the only way. Mm. That's the only way. That's Sir, the thank way. you so so much. I hope when we call you Glory. again you you will answer us when we call you again because we have a lot to ask you. That the time is not allowing us. We we'll like you to pray for You're us. My man. Pray for everyone. Yes, sir. I believe in you. And uh, oh, we've man. come a long way, sir. Yeah. You've taught me many yeah. things. And the things yeah. I know today are the things you've yeah. taught me many, yeah. many years yeah. ago. And I'm yeah. still learning more. So I would like you to pray for us. I'm seeing a lot of pastors hanging. Many of your sons, they are all hanging on listening to you. I want you to speak a word into their life and a blessing into their life, and I know not in less, in less than two weeks we shall still call you back again so that we can right. fellowship. We're enjoying this thing. It's something else. And I know I for it. one, my wife will not allow me rest until I bring you back <laughs> again <laughs> because yeah. she's over joyous and she's enjoying everything. She's a, she's a yes, great sir. woman. <laughs> so over to you, sir. I'm happy. <laughs> yes, sir. Let's pray. Father, we rejoice for the privilege we have to study. Mm to study your word and to set the focus of your people on the things that matter. Yes. Thank you for revelation knowledge. Yes. Thank you that your word is life. Your word is spirit. 
We pray that yes. everybody that was a part of this today, the eyes of their understanding be flooded with light. We decree mm -hmm. that they will come to a place of accurate understanding of their yes. rights and privileges in Christ, of their yes. identity in Christ Jesus. And we pray that even at this time of repositioning, pastors yes. that are watching online, that yes. they will have clarity of direction, clarity yes. of thoughts. They will know exactly yes. what to do to position themselves to make the yes. impact that the gospel requires to be made in the yes. post-corona world. And we yes. pray, Lord, that the gospel continues to advance. Nations open up to the gospel of Jesus Christ. The word yes. of his grace continues to advance. So mightily is growing the word and prevailing over circumstances. We pray yes. for people going through trying times. We pray for people going through challenging times, those going through yes. infirmities, who need a yes. miracle right now. We agree yes. together. We declare yes. a miracle. Sick yes. bodies yes. be healed. Yes. Bodies and yokes be destroyed. In the Challenges name of Jesus. be subdued. Circumstances yes. be subdued. In the yes. name of Jesus, we yes. command yes. miracles. We command miracles. Yes. We command yes. miracles. Yes. Wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice, receive yes. miracles. Receive yes. miracles. Yes. Miracles yes. for your body. Miracles for yes. your home. Miracles for yes. your yes. finances. Miracles yes. for your ministry. In the name of yes. Jesus. Jesus. And Father, Amen. we give you praise for answered prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. One more thing. People God. want to ask Jesus to come into their life. I would yes. like you to pray for them. But also, yes. I heard yes. you said, and we have said it over and over, you don't give your life to Christ because you don't have life to give. But uh, you ask you Christ to come into your heart. Yes, come into your heart. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. yes sir. want to pray for those of you who want to receive Christ tonight, wherever you are. Just say these words of faith with us. Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me. I believe you, you died were, for me. You were buried on my behalf. You were buried on my behalf. And you rose again on the third day. You rose again the third day. For my justification. For my justification. I receive eternal life. I receive eternal life. Right now. Right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you said wow. that prayer, Amen. a miracle has happened. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Wow. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We're talking with Dr. Abel Damina. He's my mentor, the man who laid hands on me. I became a pastor under him for many years. He ordained me first in ministry. And many mega men of God you see today that are making impact around the world. So he's been in ministry for quite a long, long time. He deserves our regard, our respect, and honor. We love you so much, sir. You will greet Thank mama, you, the kids for us, and everyone. We'll surely I get will. in touch again for you to come bless us more and more in the name of Amen. Jesus. Ladies Amen. and gentlemen, that Amen. is all we got Amen. for today. And I know that you've been blessed. I would like you to replay and replay this message over and over again. Something will break loose, something will jump into your spirit, and you will never remain the same. Like we did explain yesterday, we couldn't come up because Zoom did not allow us to come up because it was not connecting to Facebook. So we couldn't get Bishop Noel Jones to come. Minister, he was seated waiting on the waiting room for more than one hour, 30 minutes. I had to apologize on your behalf and on my behalf. So we agreed he's coming up again on Friday by, by 5.30, we're having Bishop Noel Jones. Then on tomorrow, I'm coming with two services. 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. on the unfinished work of Christ or the unfinished work of the church. And uh, we're going to be dealing with that on tomorrow. And then on Monday by 2 o'clock, we have Bishop Thomas, another brutal, dangerous man of God from the U.K., very highly acidic and corrosive, will be coming on board by 2 with us. And then on Wednesday, two people will be ministering alongside with me, Dr. Mike Mudok and my own son, Jesse Talena. I want to ask Jesse some question what it takes, how does it feel to be a pastor's son, what are the things he has learned on Wednesday, Jesse Talena from Canada, will be connecting his calling in Canada, will be connecting Jesse Talena, will be connecting Dr. Mike Mudok on Wednesday also. Then Friday, we'll be connecting Dr. Bishop Noel Jones. Bishop Noel Jones will be coming on board on Saturday, will be connecting Sonny Badu. Sonny Badu will be singing and ministering alongside with us so we are loaded, we are blessed, we are anointed, we are connected, and the Spirit of God is upon us. If the Lord is leading you to be part and parcel of this ministry, to partner with us, 
you can then go straight to our website. You can also uh, download the app, uh, Shepherd's House Assembly International, download an app. It will lead you to our television station. We have over, uh, our television station is 24, Shepherd's Touch TV. You can also sow your seed. Better still also uh, the accounts on the TV screen. You can sow your seed. You can give whatever the Lord impress in your heart for the propagation of the kingdom. We own a television station called the Shepherd's Touch TV. We'd like you to be part and parcel of the Shepherd's Touch TV and partner with us around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is all we got. We just want to worship God. It's not enough to be full with spiritual food. You need to drink water. So you need to water what you have received with a worship. We just want to worship for just two minutes, after which I'm going to bring the, the section to an end. Lift up your hands wherever you are, and let's begin to worship. Thank you, Jesus. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, God. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Coming up two services, 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. We have palliative for all of the church members. Go through your G12 for your palliative is ready. We have palliative for over 400 people. Go to your through your G12, go to your HOD, head of department. We tell you how to get your palliative from here, Shepherd's House headquarters. Ladies and gentlemen, until I come your way again tomorrow, don't you ever forget if it is not God, we serve nothing at all. If it is not God, we'd rather die than to serve the devil. We're going to sing a song. The moment I say bye-bye, we close it. Just sing for me, two in front. I just love that song. Come on. Just sing two in front. I and you, only Jesus. And that's all. And then once I wave bye-bye, it is over. Let us begin to flow. I'll put you in front. Hey. In front of my melody, you were all the matters, oh God, you were all the matters. I will make room for two, you and I, Jesus, you were all the matters, oh God, you were all the
fraud. I put you in front. In front of my best. In front.